In today's video, we're going to be replicating what this little remote can do using an Arduino or an ESP. If you've recently bought a diesel heater, then you would have had one of these included. I've just done a video over on my main channel, which talks about how I can use a diesel heater for an alternative to heating versus electricity, which is getting ridiculously expensive at the moment. So go check that out if you want to see how I've set that up and some of my testing and thoughts on the actual device. You might ask why do this project at all when the diesel heater has an interface that can do some, some interesting things. Well, there are some obvious limitations with the diesel heater. This project aims to remove those limitations. So let's get started with this project. The first thing we need to do is find out what are the codes that it's sending on the 433 megahertz radio wave. We're gonna need the remote, of course. We're gonna need some connecting wires. We're gonna need a 433 megahertz receiver. I'll link that down below. Well, I'll link all these project items down below. And we're gonna need an Arduino Uno. Data, data can be on either of those two pins over there because they are both connected, it seems. And then VCC power is gonna go there. Uh, I run it off five volts. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is get hold of this library, RC Switch. I'll leave a link down below for this chap's GitHub so you can download it directly and then install it into your IDE. Or you can go into the Arduino library manager and it should be in there if you just do a search for RC-Switch. Now you'll notice I'm using Arduino IDE 2. I have switched over recently. I'm still deciding whether I like it or not. I'm so used to version one, so it does look a little different to some of the other projects that I've done because obviously the IDE is different. Once you've installed the library, you might need to restart your Arduino IDE uh, so that the library is there. But if you go down to examples and then scroll all the way to the bottom, RC switch, get RC demo advanced, well, receive demo advanced. There we go, it's compiled and uploaded. Let's have a look at the serial monitor. Make sure that your serial monitor, as always, that it's on the correct board rate. So 9600, and we can see here in the setup that it's also 9600, else you're gonna see either nothing in the serial monitor or you're gonna see scrambled up stuff. Okay, so we've got that there. All we need to do now is take the remote and, uh, well, let's press off. And there you go, you see that data come across. So I can do that with all these. I'm pressing down, up, off, on. Okay, so let's try, the first one will be on. We have that binary over there. So on, we need that. Um, we don't need this other stuff really. Uh, just pay attention, You're gonna. it's gonna be the same. This microseconds, that's how long the pulse length is. Uh, it should be the same for each of them. So, yeah, let's just make a note of that up there. And protocol one, again, just take note of it, but it should be protocol one unless they're doing something weird on your specific device. So we've got on and off, uh, up and down. So off. And don't copy my values because it's not necessarily going to work for your own one and up and down. And if your remote has any other features on it, then obviously you press those as well and you got those button presses. It's pretty straightforward. But mine is very simple, only those four buttons. I do want to maybe in the future just figure out if it will respond to any other uh, binary because you can see it's following a pattern here, 100. So basically just the last three are changing. So it might be worth fiddling around and seeing if it responds to any of these other pulses or any of these other uh, binary that, you know, that's maybe not documented. That could be interesting. You'll need a temperature probe. I'm just using this, it's got a bit of a screen on, but that's just a DHT22 that's inside there. And you're gonna need a button, at least for this project. It's not really necessary, but uh, it does help with something that I've implemented. Then we're going to need either a Arduino Nano, Arduino Uno, whatever Arduino you wanna use, but you can use an ESP. This is an ESP32. The benefit with using an ESP is it is Wi-Fi enabled, so you could create a little interface for it so you can remotely 
switch it on and off and uh, monitor what's going on. But yeah, I don't need that for this project. One of the most important things is your power. So if you've watched the video that I've put out on my main channel, I would recommend going and watching it because it'll give you a better idea of what's all happening here, especially if you don't have a diesel heater and you're thinking of one. I have a AC to DC power converter that basically just powers up the diesel heater. I can run 12 volts into this, which will then be pushing it down to five volts, which I'll directly power the device. So this is just a simple little buck converter, a mini 360 you would have seen me using it in a few of my projects. Again, I will link it down below. Uh, we're also gonna be using a little project box. I've already drilled this out. Now this isn't gonna be the neatest project in the world. I haven't built out a uh, circuit board or anything like that. Let's get this buck converter set so that it gives a nice clean five volt output because you could blow this if you get the voltage wrong. So just make sure that that's set correctly before you do anything else. And we have 12 volts going into this. So you see it's pushing out 11.07. We're turning it clockwise to bring the voltage down. I think that's close enough. We finished up with the hardware, it's time now to do some coding. There's a few things you need to pay attention to that you need to change. If you are using a DHT22, then you can pretty much leave this as it is, just make sure you're using the right pins. If you're using another temperature sensor, you're gonna have to incorporate that, of course. Now, I have tried to give some hints as to what everything is in this, so it should be fundamentally uh, simple, but just in case, we have your on, off, up, and down. So these correspond with this that we created earlier. On, off, up, and down. And you can see it's the same binary over there. I put a button in place because I want two different modes of heating. One is I want this thing to heat within a range that will show you in just a second and uh, I want it to heat at max just get that thing up to the temperature I need once it gets to that switch it off and let it come down again once it gets below a certain temperature then switch on again and carry on as a normal heater would the other mode is a frost mode because I'm growing chilies and things like that I need a mode that allows me to remove the risk of frost so I need lower temperatures to be maintained in my case, we can see down here, frost settings, we have a low of two. So that's the lowest it can get to, and then a high of six. So it'll switch on and it'll try and heat things up to get to six degrees. Once it gets to six degrees, it'll switch off and you'll see the temperatures drop again. Once it's two again, it will increase. So I can change that if I want four, maybe that's probably a more realistic four. And we'll say this one here can go up to eight. I'll typically be using this in the greenhouse. So I don't want it sitting on a full blast for too long. It's literally just to stop frost from getting to my plants. This here, Frost D, that's a delay before switching it on again in minutes. You don't want your heater to be switching on and off, on and off too frequently. It's not good for your system. However, I've set it here for five minutes. I think five minutes is all right. Um, I could probably do with 10 minutes. You know, that, that gap in between that 10 minutes, my plants aren't going to die. It's not going to suddenly freeze. So I'm not too worried about it. But here, this is what you can play with. Then you got HO. Okay, so... With the remote, we have the on, we have the off, and we have the up and down. Now, with the up and down, it's not something... I can't tell which setting it's on. The quicker it's pumping fuel, the hotter it's going to get. The slower it's pumping fuel, the, the cooler it's going to get. What I'm doing here is, by having it at zero, that means that it's on low setting. It's going to press down multiple times. So once it switches on the device, it's going to have a bit of a delay. And then it's going to go down, 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 down. And it, that means that it's just going to bring it right down to the lowest heat output that the system can have. When I do the same thing for normal heating settings, I want this thing to heat up as quickly as possible and push out as much heat as quickly as possible so that there you can see I've got heat output as one, which means that it's going to press up, 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 up 
and get it so that it's pushing out the maximum heat. That's all it is. Pretty simple, really, because like I said in the beginning, there's no two-way sort of reading with a 433 megahertz system. So I can't really tell what setting it's on. It's either going to be on really hot or really cold. The normal heat settings, again, just set what you need. I've set this to 10 and 18. So at 10 degrees Celsius, if it gets below that, it's going to kick in. As soon as it gets to 18 degrees, it's going to switch itself off. And then I've said there 30 minutes delay before it can switch on again. Uh, I might change that to, let's say, 15. That's fine. Send 433, this is the pin, is when it starts um, enable transmit. You can see that there. Pulse length, remember pulse length from this here. 369 microseconds on my one and I'm pretty sure yours will be similar but whatever your pulse was when you're doing the reading that's what you're going to put in here here is where we check if heat mode is one so these this is checking is the button pressed or not because uh, over here we're getting a digital read of the button press and that's only doing it if the heat mode is different to the digital read button so that's checking is the button has the button been pressed has the button mode changed since the last time we checked if it has then run through this basically it's going to change all the settings if is not a number temperature so if the temperature sensor hasn't got a proper reading then it's just going to write that and it's going to skip over all this other work that it's doing so you can see all this here so it's going to skip over that if there's no valid temperature sense sensor reading uh, just bear that in mind so if you've wired up your temperature sensor or if that temperature sensor is not getting readings then the rest of this isn't going to work because the way I built this is so that it will work mainly with temperature right I'm not doing any scheduling or anything in here this is purely focused on temperature so if there is no temperature reading then it's not going to do anything it's just going to keep spinning so just make sure that uh, everything is working. And again, using these serial print lines, you can see whether you're getting a reading or not. So if you have got a proper valid reading, then it's going to go down here and it's going to start doing some checks. And uh, this is where some of my logic, I have done testing and it's been working fine for about a week and a half, two weeks now. It's been doing a good job. And uh, there might still be a little bit of logic here, some anomalies that might occur, but... From what I can see, it's working all right. If this is all true, then it's saying it's turning on heater and then RF on. RF on is a function that we have down here. Uh, we have RF on, which is sending RF send. So you can see that it's pulling up that array that we created earlier. And yeah, well, there you can see it's that part of that array. So RF send is zero, which is on. If it's off, then it's RF send one which is the second element in that array and then same thing down here high output and you can see here i'm just pressing that button 15 times over there and that's for number two or down is number three in that array remember that array start at zero not at one so if you have four elements in an array the fourth element is actually element three just a just keep that in mind. But yeah, you can play around with this code. There really isn't much to it. It's kind of brute force with what I'm doing here, but it works well. And you can really build on this if you want to add a web-based interface. You can do that if you want to add a little screen to it. You can do that as well. Uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to do too much more than what I've done. Uh, it's a heater at the end of the day. I don't need anything too fancy. I've already got monitoring systems inside my grow shed and inside my greenhouse. So that's doing all that I need from that perspective. So let me send this code to my Arduino and let's see what sort of outputs we're going to get. Um, yeah, let's send that across. Compiling sketch. Hope that I've wired everything up correctly because I don't want to have to pull it all apart to fix it. Okay, let's have a look in the serial monitor. Well, temperature sensor is doing its reading. It's telling me that button one is pressed. And we'll see that this one come up again until I press the button again. I'm going to press the button. There you go. So button in is zero and button out is one. So button out means it's going to be in frost mode and button in is going to be normal mode but let's go outside and test it with my actual diesel heater and see how we do
There's the diesel heater and the AC to DC converter. I've already wired in a little tail so we can plug this in and out as we need to. It just allows me to take it inside easier than unscrewing everything. There we go, that's plugged in. And let's plug in the actual converter. Now I've left this on the uh, frost setting just so it doesn't start everything off too quickly. And then we'll switch it over in just a sec. So while that powers on, you can hear the little fan going there. This thing here switches on, which is the controller for the diesel heater. And uh, see a few settings on there. I've set the temperature on this actually to 14 degrees minimum and 21 degrees maximum. And that will happen obviously when I press the button. Let's see what happens. I'll press the button and you should be able to. Yep, well, you can hear the fan kick in on the diesel heater it's switching on and if we go and look over here we can see there that it says it's on now and yeah all working good so that'll take a little while to heat up the glow plug the fuel will start pumping through and the diesel heater will turn on i'm sure the diesel heater is going to kick on while i'm talking here but yeah the project hopefully you give it a try if it's something you're looking for there are off the shelf solutions for this that you can buy but it costs more than 100 bucks and uh, some of it ships out from australia there's a guy out there that's building these units that have wi-fi enablement and all that i'm pretty sure it uses esp32s or a266s but this is quite a simple project around about eight pound in parts so it's not terribly expensive and yeah it does the job so I can hear that thing kicking in, the uh, pump is starting to run, and yeah, I can feel some heat coming through there, and I can hear it flaming on inside there. So yeah, it's all working well. I'm going to close this place up now and let it get warm. But if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. The updated code will be in the link in my description. So just check that out. There's going to be a few things I'm going to modify and should be useful for yourself. But thank you so much for watching and until the next episode, stay spicy.